Hello and welcome to another episode of Bevy Basics. In this episode, I'll be covering commands in Bevy. I'll be starting with what is a command and how does it relate to Bevy as a design pattern. I'll then be covering Bevy's command struct, which can be used as a system parameter, the built-in commands that come with that, how to make ad hoc commands, and then how to make custom command structs. Anyone who's used Bevy for any length of time will have at some point or another used the commands system parameter, whether it's to spawn entities or add or remove resources. Even though we have lots of experience using commands, it doesn't mean it's not necessary to understand what a command actually is. In most use cases, Bevy users won't need or benefit from understanding a command, but there are some cases where it'll make things a lot easier and simpler to understand commands. So you're probably wondering at this point, what is a command? And the short answer is, it's delayed mutable access to a world. All systems add their commands to the commands queue, and then the commands are applied to the world at the end of the stage. Now I understand this doesn't sound very impressive, but that's where the long answer is for. So why do I think having delayed access to the world is so important to understand for your game development? Well, the primary benefit is parallelization. Bevy has a complex scheduler that tries to run as many systems in parallel as it can. It does this by not allowing two systems to have shared mutable access to the same resource or components at the same time. The main limitation of this is that you lose all your speed up if you have lots or expensive systems that need mutable access to the same resource, such as, say, the collection of entities in the world. But as most Rust users know, the limitation to parallelization is mutable access. So if you don't need to read and then write immediately, you can run the system in parallel, collect the changes you want to make, and then only get mutable access at the end to apply the changes. This is where commands delayed access to the world comes in. You can do all your complex and expensive logic to calculate the data and simply queue up the, the changes for the end of the stage instead of needing mutable access for the system itself, especially since mutable world access would conflict with all other systems. And a lot of the time your expensive logic would need to access the same resources as other systems with expensive logic. Bevy applies all commands that it has collected at the end of each stage. This is why you will notice a frame lag if you have a change and added system if they are in the same stage as the system that is adding the component. This is one of those places where it is helpful to understand what commands are so that you can reason about how to order your systems, whether you need to have them cross a stage boundary or if the before and after labels will suffice. The before and after labels will suffice if you are directly modifying the value on the component for a change detection system, but not if you are adding or removing components since these will only be applied at the end of the stage. And so that system would need to cross a stage boundary. Now that you understand that Bevy commands are a way to get mutable world access without losing your system's parallelization, let's move on to the command struct that Bevy provides in its prelude. Bevy's command struct is one of a few types that can be used as a system parameter directly without needing to be wrapped in another type and has a collection of built-in commands that are used for common mutable access that the user might want inside a system, such as spawning, removing, or inserting components and resources into entities or the world, respectively. The command struct consists of a queue of commands to be executed at the end of the current stage, along with a reference to the world's entities. This entity's reference is used to return a reserved entity that is done using atomics, but is a necessary performance sacrifice since unlike other commands, the spawn command needs to respond with information about the entity that has been reserved for when the command is run. And this would not be possible without some use of synchronization and atomics. Once you have access to the command struct inside your system, you will have access to 20-ish commands that can be used that are built into Bevy. For brevity, I have grouped this into four groups. Spawn commands. These are all the commands that allow you to create new entities and give them components. They are spawn, spawn empty, get or spawn, spawn batch, uh, spawn and or insert batch. All but the batch versions of these commands will then return a com entity commands, which can be used with the next group of commands. On the main command struct, there are 
two additional functions to get access to entity commands, being entity and get entity. Entity will panic if the entity doesn't exist, whereas get entity will simply return none if the entity doesn't exist and sum if it does. Once you have the entity command, you can run any of the subcommands, insert, remove any of the despawn commands, any of the hierarchy manipulation commands, such as adding or removing children, and the log components command, which will log in info level all the components on that entity. Resource commands. These are used to change resources, such as adding, removing, or initializing resources into the world. And finally, custom commands. These allow you to create commands of your own and run them, including ad hoc and one-shot commands, or you can implement command onto your own struct. Speaking of custom commands, that's the next thing to cover. I'm going to start with ad hoc commands, since personally I think these are very powerful and have not seen people using them. And I for one did not know they existed until very recently. Bevy's custom commands are anything that implements the command trait. This includes an automatic implementation for any closure or function that takes in a mutable world as its only argument. This allows you to have mutable access to the world without introducing any parameter conflicts. The only restriction is that you can't read any data out of the world back into that system. This function or closer can only read and write data internally with itself. So for example, it could extract the data that it needed from the world to complete its initialization if that was required but would not be able to pass any of that data back to your system for it to continue working, since this closure will be run later on in the future. This means that the whole system remains type safe and memory safe. As an example of this, I have found a use case in my game dev adventures in procedural mesh generation. By using an ad hoc command, it is possible to have multiple systems generate the meshes and then use a command to insert them into the assets meshes without needing each system to have mutable access to the mesh assets. It is also possible to use a function with the same signature as the closure to make the function run at the end of each stage. This is less useful since you can't capture unique information for each run of the system and can't guarantee when in the command stack it will end up running. So you can't guarantee that it'll run last. But I'm sure there are some use cases for it somewhere. If you want the best of both worlds, there is also the final option of implementing the command trait yourself. This will allow you to reuse large chunks of codes in multiple places along with allowing you to pass in multiple parameters for the command to use. The command trait is very similar to using a closure. You simply have to implement the right function. This takes in itself and mutable access to the world. You can then do whatever you need to the world with access to the struct's data. If you create your own commands, it is also possible to extend the commands struct to give you access to these commands directly, similar to how the spawn and remove functions work. If you create a plugin, you could also extend the commands straight so people have an easy way to access the commands for your plugin. And you could also then include extra sanity checks when creating the command, introducing better safety. Thank you for watching the video and I hope you've enjoyed. And everyone have a Merry Christmas. Hopefully, if all things go to plan, this will be being released Christmas morning my time. So I hope you all enjoy and like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.